Part 2. Verdant Wind. Pegasus Moon. Valley of Torment. Having repelled the Imperial Vanguard, the Alliance Army requests reinforcements from Judith, head of House Daphno, the governing body in the northwestern regions of Alliance territory. What? Not enough blood for seconds? I'm barely half full! You eat too much anyways, Raphael. Supplies are running low, so you're just gonna have to deal with it. You've always been so level-headed, Cyril. Now that you've grown up, you're even more that way. Maybe it's just that the rest of you haven't grown enough. You could work harder at being reliable. I can't grow if I can't eat. I have some good news for my hungry friends. We got a reply from Judith. Mr. Leaderman has called a meeting about it. Hurry up, everyone. We finally received a reply from Judith. The hero of Daphnil has agreed to support us with soldiers and supplies. She's gonna give us food? She really is a hero. Maybe Raphael will simmer down now. Now, regarding where we're going to receive the delivery, as this is a request from none other than the leader of the Alliance, I wish that I could send troops at once. However, openly marshalling soldiers within my territory could provoke other members of the Alliance. Therefore, I will secretly gather troops in Aelel, the Valley of Torment. Will your group be able to receive the soldiers at this location? From there, it should be safe to return to the monastery by following the border between the Alliance and the Kingdom. ALL is on the border between Daphnil territory and the kingdom. It'll make sense when we get there, but it's a peculiar region. I recall there being a scary legend about it. In any case, if we use that valley, we shouldn't have to worry about being noticed by other Alliance lords. ALL, the Valley of Torment. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, wow, thanks. This is lovely. Yep. <laughs> huh? My mind keeps drifting today. Okay? This is lovely. This is lovely. <laughs> uh, if you hear anything, it's not my stomach grumbling. Just so you know. So delish. Thanks for the tea. I hope you'll invite me again. Bye. 
My room works better for me, but I am willing to compromise for today. Thank you. Will you drink some? Indeed. Well then. Indeed. Indeed. What? <laughs> Delicious. The Crest of Flames shares many traits with other crests, yet it also has many unique characteristics. Something wrong with my monocle? It is a custom-made piece, yet still problematic sometimes. Will you drink some? You do seem to have a mark of the exceptional about you. Something wrong with my monocle? Thank you for a wonderful time, Professor. I passed. Is that Professor Manuela? 
Her voice is every bit as fine as you might expect from the former leader of the Middle Franc troop. Oh, if it weren't for her drinking and her woefully inadequate manners, she would fit right in with high society. Wait a minute. As my mind clings to desperate thoughts, here it comes, horse bone moon and summer's end. That's my... Oh, no. No, no, no! Oh, Lawrence! I heard you shout. Are you okay? The poem! My poem! Forget it, I said! I asked you for one thing! And I told you it would be impossible for me to forget. Certainly, I understand. But setting it to music, and now singing it? Oh, yes. It makes for a beautiful song, doesn't it? I'm feeling so lonely and blue. My dearest has left. He has gone far away. And I'm here, all alone. And in my sadness, your poem... Well, it became a song for me to sing. It brought me a moment of happiness. I do not know who spurned you, but I assure you my poem has nothing to do with any such feelings. <sighs> it is getting late. We should both turn in. I will take my leave now. Oh, I understand. You're leaving me too. Why? Am I too old to matter? No, I never said any such thing. Why, I am sure there are plenty of men who would prefer a mature woman such as yourself. Mature, he says. I knew it. You're all the same, you know. No one sees the person behind the voice. They just see me older today than yesterday. They say, oh, look what happened to her. Nobody sees my frustration, my resignation to be forever alone. But you do. It's all right there in your poem. Please, I assure you, my poem was not about that at all. It was actually about the ideal of nobility. The sentiment is that someday I know I will get what I want. There is no resignation in it, as you seem to be suggesting. Lawrence. I was sure the poem was more about someone lamenting their frailty and the loneliness of time's passing. But that's not it at all, is it? This is the story of someone impatient to get ahead, who is afraid they'll never make it. The speaker in the poem does lament his shortcomings. The road to reach his ideal is long. It is a trial, a test. If he can just find his way through it, he knows he can move forward. So I think you should try to move forward too. Because with a voice as talented as yours, how could you possibly fail? Lawrence, Someday, you should let me sing this song in public. I think people who are battling through their own trials, they might find comfort in this. And I believe I'm the only one who can do your work justice. Very well. You have my assent. On the condition that you do not attach my name to it. Now, permit me to retire for the night. I require ample rest to maintain an adequate level of polish, you know. I suppose... If my poem must be set to music, then it had best be done by such a talented singer. pass out. Uh, Sh Shamir? I'm so sorry. I, uh... Are you trying to breathe like I showed you? <sighs> not even close. That, uh, in-out-out technique sounds so easy, but it's not easy at all. It's only easy for me because I put in the time to practice. You need to practice if you want it to work. <sighs> oh, yeah? Really? So I should be able to do it if I just practice? Yes. I see, I see. You had no presence. <sighs> Again. <sighs> yes, sometimes my presence fades without even trying. It can be a nuisance. 
<sighs> One of these days, I'm gonna do it just like you. Seems unlikely, but keep practicing. It, yeah. Got it. <sighs> Thanks. Stop doing it while you're talking. It's disturbing. Ah, Leone. Off to train? Already done. What about you? Off to draw? No, I'm on my way back. I was thinking of adding a little color to my latest piece, so... Come to think of it, I've still never seen your work. Here, let me take a peek. It doesn't work like that. You have to let me know in advance. I need time to prepare. <laughs> Lighten up. Wow, look at all that paper. Are these all drawings? What should I look at first? Wherever we travel, I try to capture the feeling and character of the landscape. I guess they've all kind of piled up. Each place is unique. Not just the geography, but also the clothing and architecture and so on. Everywhere has its own design sensibilities. Yeah. You'd think there'd be only one way to do stuff like engraving, but it actually varies a lot. Just within the Alliance, the styles are quite different between the North and South, and the Empire is even more diverse. Oh, here's a landscape. What a bright blue sky. You really make it seem alive. The blue of the sky changes with the season, too. In the summer, it's darker, and yet in the winter, it's almost luminous. And, of course, the landscape below affects the sky's appearance by virtue of contrast. It's hard to get the color just right, so I spend a lot of time experimenting with pigments and... Oh no, I I'm so sorry, I've been talking your ear off. Listen, Ignatz, you need to become a painter. Huh? Don't say it's not useful. Your talent moves people. Someday, I'm sure your art will save someone's life. Oh no, I wouldn't go nearly that far. Remember that girl you told me about? You made her so happy, and you were only just starting out. Think about what you could do now that you've had so much practice. This is your calling. You think so? Yeah. It's something you can do that no one else can. I envy you. I wish I had a gift like that. So stop apologizing for your talent and just do it. Thank you, Leone. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot to think about. Ah, there they go, starting another fight. I'm just gonna march over and... Wait, no. I have to restrain myself. Caspar, he can't stop himself. <laughs> he does look quite heroic, though, and seems to be having a good time. Ha! That takes care of that. Oh, oh no. Were you watching just now? Who? Me? <laughs> watching what? The, uh, the fight that just happened. The fight that I definitely didn't start. I've been trying to restrain myself, like you said, and I've been so good about it, too. But they pulled me in. I tried to keep back, but... Ah! Okay, you got me. I can't restrain myself. I, I just don't have it in me. But the bad guys were dealt with, so it turned out fine, right? <laughs> yes, completely fine. If that's what you want to do, who am I to complain? Really? You're not gonna tell me how disappointed you are, and that I need to be better? I figured you'd be mad, but you're actually smiling. Ah, uh, no use in getting mad. In fact, I found the whole spectacle very entertaining. You seem to be enjoying yourself. I was. I mean, sometimes I just can't help myself, and I gotta get out there. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you were watching. Why didn't you try and stop me? Me stop you? As if I would never voluntarily go to so much trouble. 
Besides, you are fighting with so much passion, couldn't help but feel smitten. Smitten? Wow. Well, you must really love a good fight. I gotta admit, that one was pretty good. I guess I love fighting too. The Valley of Torment? What kind of a name for a place is that? It sounds scary. Do I really have to go with you? Hey, um, here's an idea. Maybe let the recluse stay home and hold the fort. Since the past, I have learned much of the language of Fodlin, but speaking the Fodlin language still gives me difficulty. I can understand, read, and write with nearly perfection now, but understanding and speaking are fruits of a different color. I have gratitude for you, Professor. I hope that I will have fluency one day. Right. You're not a teacher anymore, and we're not your students, but everyone still calls you professor. Is there something you'd rather be called? Oh? All right then, I'll call you... Ugh, nope, sorry, can't do it. Too weird. Storerooms, tend the flowers, do the washing, dust the library. No, this is my job. Lady Rhea herself gave it to me. Even if Lady Rhea's not here right now, I still gotta do my duty. Like you, you gotta have other stuff you ought to be doing, yeah? do get used to the sight of blood. It always makes me feel as if I might faint. I suppose I've told you that though, yes? I have no idea how you cope with it. I hope this war ends soon. I dislike being lightheaded because other people are bleeding everywhere. Though the thought of working hard for it does sound like quite a pain. <laughs> Professor, nothing to report. Is everyone setting out on a big campaign? Not exactly. Ah, so you're meeting up with the reinforcements. Well, you can leave guarding this place to me. I'll keep an eye out for anything suspicious. Professor! Hey, Professor! Thanks for your hard work again. Nothing to report today. <laughs> was I convincing? Was it like he was standing right in front of you? Some things are the same as they were five years ago, but 
I guess a lot more has changed. Right. Hello? What do you require? Farewell. What do you require? Do you want to hire this battalion? Farewell. Really now? There's a... I hope they... Professor? Can you help me? AOL, the Valley of Torment. Oh man, I really do not want to go there. That place is crazy hot. For guys like me, who grew up somewhere cold, man, it's gonna be rough. Though, I guess that climate will keep our enemies at bay. of Garrett Mark lie the territories of the Karen and Galatea houses, former lords of the kingdom. Even though their territory is being nibbled at by the Empire, they are still clinging to their neutrality. Since they only display enough force to defend their borders, I suppose the Empire has no incentive to attack them with any real strength. I see. You know, I'd never have been recognized as the legitimate heir to House Regan without Judith's recommendation. Feels like I'm digging myself deeper and deeper in debt to the hero of Daphnal, but what do you do? It's all been worth it. After all, we need the Daphnal army for our next move. It's possible we'll have to deal with our enemy sooner than later. Be prepared, Teach. told me stories of Judith's bravery. With just one look, she tamed a runaway horse that nobody else had been able to touch. When an Almiran general provoked her, she talked him into a tearful apology. She's spectacular. I wish she'd fight alongside us. Galateas are an offshoot of the Daphnal family. The family split in half, and two brothers quarreled over an inheritance. 
Despite blood relations, the families lived apart from one another, so the relationship has been distant and somewhat estranged. I'm not so much acquainted with Judith, the head of House Daphnel. Professor, how do Claude and Judith know each other? I hear there are still quarrels within the Alliance. This generous offer of soldiers and supplies seems a little too good to be true. I mean, it's also really impressive, but I'm just a little worried, I suppose. Sharing her food with us for nothing in return? Judith really is a great person. She's more like a goddess than the goddess is. I never met her, so I don't know for sure. But she must be beautiful and kind. Some of our friends believe that if we get those reinforcements, we'll be set for provisions, too. But I think it's best not to hold our breath on the food front. With the added headcount from the reinforcements, there will be even more mouths to feed. There are enemy spies around. Remain vigilant. Capture anyone who seems suspicious. I'm glad you understand. I'm counting on you. We've heard people talk about the hero of Daphnel. If the stories of her courage are true, no one will be able to stand against us. In different circumstances, I'd have wanted to try crossing swords with her. Right now, we have to focus on getting to those reinforcements. Let's hope nothing goes wrong. Professor? The bridge that links Alliance and Empire lands is currently under the occupation of the Imperial Army. In other words, the Empire can choose to invade the Alliance whenever they wish. I want you to understand that my father does not support the Empire to antagonize House Regan. He does it to deprive them of an easy excuse to cross that bridge. ALL, the Valley of Torment, lies on the border of three noble territories. The Kingdom's Fraldarius and Galatea families, and the Alliance's Daphno family. In the Fraldarius lands to the north, the former Kingdom army and new Duke's army are fighting. Hmm. Really? Aww. It has been only five years, yet so much has changed. Half of the kingdom has fallen to the Empire. Skirmishes are rife throughout the Alliance. Despite such tumult, we look upon the same sky, unchanged by the storm happening beneath it. Indeed, I gazed up at this same sky with mother and father. It does not feel so long ago at all. Wait, but how would you know, Professor? Meeting reinforcements in the Valley of Torment seems an astute decision to me. In that land of oppressive heat, it is unlikely that we will be disturbed. It also means we will need to contend with those harsh conditions ourselves, however. 
Best ensure we are well prepared. Professor! Professor! I have lived inconspicuously these past five years, so as not to be discovered by the Empire. To be able to finally return to the monastery again is overwhelming. I hope that our brothers and sisters who ran far away will also return one day. Need something? See you again soon. fun everyone should enjoy themselves while they're doing it there's someone who's slightly off oh well that adds some color I suppose Fargus dukedom in place, the kingdom is essentially no more. The majority of the lords who once belonged to the kingdom are now under the jurisdiction of the Empire. Even the houses that haven't been to me yet, like House Braldarius, will soon be crushed. It's only a matter of time. I didn't think we'd end up fighting Randolph. He's my uncle. Well, not by blood, so... I guess I can handle it. Don't worry about me. I'm ready for anything. Hi. I can't believe it. The Valley of Torment. I'd heard of it, but I never expected to go there. It's exciting. I wonder what the landscape is like. Hmm. That is an interesting point. The name does seem to suggest that. We may not be students anymore, but it's still important to read. We might even learn something that's useful for our next battle. <laughs> I suppose that may be true. I always try my best at both. It's a shame the monastery was ruined, but... At least the books are still intact. Monastery repairs have made solid progress. Most excellent news. When we first returned here, I was unsure what we were going to do with the ruins of this place. But if we can get the cathedral rebuilt, we'll have it looking just like old times soon enough. Professor? Hearing that an old student has died cuts me right to the heart. As this war with the Empire continues, we'll see more of it, Professor. We have a duty to fight alongside our former students. We taught them how to fight, after all. Now, let's help them win.
Nice job! It seems Aryan Road, one of the kingdom's sturdiest fortress cities, has fallen to the Empire. It looks like Count Ro didn't resist, and switched sides to the Empire straight away. I guess it did avoid unnecessary bloodshed, so maybe it was a wise decision after all. You can't be serious. Some in Fargus believe Dimitri is still alive. My father is one such eccentric. <laughs> they can't accept reality. Dimitri is dead. He's not coming back. Someday we will take the Imperial Capital. It is odd to think that I will be invading the very city that I once called home. Ah, that is still a ways off. I will prepare for our journey to Aelon. Even though we're getting reinforcements, we should still be prepared for the worst. Never shirk your training, no matter what. To practice, I'm going to chop something up with my sword. Unless you'd like to train together. Care to spar? Really now? Appreciate it. Welcome! Is that the one? Thanks a bunch! Come back soon! I have not much experience with cooking, but I'm sure to be flawless. How hard could it be? I have a firm idea of the end result, but the process is another matter entirely. I see. smell mm, it's amazing my fave in fact do you like it too i appreciate any good meal but nothing beats enjoying my favorite food
Yummy! Who made this? I'll have to give my compliments to the chef. The flavor is nostalgic to me for some reason. Hmm, I'd like some more. This is delicious! My absolute favorite! Ooh, this is my favorite! You've got great taste! Delicious food really takes my worries away. Eating food always fires me up. Hoorah! Let's go fight somebody! looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. That looks appetizing. This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. I would be liking that greatly. I did not expect much from the dining hall, but this does not disappoint. Yeah, you just get it, Professor. This is my favorite. favorite this is my most favorite dish of all i love it almost as much as crestology itself Great? 
I got it right. Oh, I was just lucky. There is always more to learn. something I want to ask you. It seems like you just know everything. Professor?
Professor, please do not be concerned. I just did too much overworking and lost my strength. Yes, that is the truth. Please accept my apology. I have sorrow. Uh, I mean, I am sorry to be fainting at a time like this. Even though I was not asking for your care and attention, you gave it willingly. I am thinking that is incorrect. Will you have a listen to me? There is something that I must be saying. I am thinking you already have knowledge of why I came to Fodlin. Not for studying, but as a hostage for the Empire. So that Bridget would not be rebelling anymore. It feels like... a knife against my throat. That I am making my grandfather obey the Empire. If I were running away from the Empire, then Bridget would be defeated. I am not having any options. To be living, I must be fighting to win. For Bridget to be living, the Empire needs to be crushed. So I must be crushing the Empire. That is what my people are wanting from me. And what my grandfather, the King of Bridget, is wanting. That is a truth. I wonder what I should be doing. I want to be granting the wants of my tribe. So their wants are my own, correct? What I really want... I have understanding. Wait, no, I... I actually do not have understanding. Yet. What I am understanding is that there is something I am not understanding. When I know what my true want is, I give you my promise that I will be telling you first. since I had such a close call. If not for you, Professor, I wouldn't have made it. I didn't expect to be ambushed on a simple scouting mission. Yes, my objective was to gauge the enemy's strength. I'd say I was successful. <laughs> I have to ask, Professor, what brought you here? Hmm, so you came to protect me. I'm beginning to understand why your allies love you. These are selfish times. One doesn't expect to encounter selflessness. You're kind. In that respect, I'd say you're much like Lady Rhea. Of course. It's thanks to her kindness that I'm here today. I was an outlaw in Fargus. She took me in and let me live here. Didn't I tell you? I was born into House Karen in Fargus. They used to call me Thunderstrike Cassandra. I was implicated in a plot to kill the king. It was a totally false accusation, of course. I had to flee the kingdom, and the archbishop took me in. I used to be a student at the academy, so I knew I'd be safe here. Lady Rhea saved me once when I was a student, you know. I don't really remember what happened. I was badly injured and near death. Lady Rhea took care of me. She didn't mind getting dirty. She took my muddied, bloodied body into her arms. Since then, Lady Rhea has been my inspiration. I will always serve her, protect her, love her. For some reason, when I think about Lady Rhea, your face comes to mind. You've become an important presence in my life. I wasn't expecting you to have a positive response. I'm not thrilled about it personally. I am still going to keep my eye on you. Not so I can report to Lady Rhea, though. Just because I want to. I am with you this time, brother? No need to worry, Flame. Simply leave it all to me. Must you always take away all the fun from me? 
most satisfactory result. All thanks to you. Thanking me? But you did everything. I'm a quick study. One step before the next step. Interesting. All that work was worth it. Well worth the effort. Hi, Annette. Looks like some tasty food you've got there. Mind if I join you? Sure, but I'm finished eating. You're here late. Busy day? Very. I got caught up thinking about your song. I find it really makes the time fly. Uh, so you didn't manage to forget about that. I really wish you would. Alas, I cannot. That song is engraved on my soul. The lyrics, they echo in my brain, begging to be understood. Those words represent the cry of a poor soul who died in anguish. Is that it? That's it, isn't it? The cry of a poor soul? A land that's dark and frigidly cold. That could only mean the underworld. In my search for truth, I read up on the old rituals of the eastern regions of Fargus. Those who die with regret are thought to end up in an underworld of sorts. Somewhere cold, somewhere dark, somewhere creepy. To escape from their bitter limbo, they dig their way up through the earth, trying to find the surface, or the light, in other words. And so they creep about endlessly in the cold dirt of the underworld, clinging to their hopeless desire. Creepity creep, Annette. Creepity creep. Uh... So, was I right, or was I right? What? No, you're not even close. It wasn't supposed to be a dark and miserable song at all. Huh. Now that I think about it, the melody and dance didn't really match the weight of the lyrics. The lyrics are simply about seeds pushing out of the ground to become sweet little buds. They creep through the dirt until they find the light. The song just describes what it's like to be a budding flower. Damn. That is good stuff. Okay, maybe I read too much into it. Actually, now that you've explained, it really is a nice little song. Creepity Creep. The gentle journey from the ground to the surface. I love it. Do you think it's embarrassing that I made up such a silly song? Not at all. Oh, but that reminds me. I was so inspired by Creepity Creep that I made up some lyrics of my own. I've been nonchalantly carrying them around with me, hoping to run into you. Would you mind taking a look? Oh, of course. Let's see here. Walking with purpose and a steady stride Lively and bright and full of pride Crying, laughing and blazing ahead Why worry about tomorrow? Let's eat instead So, uh, what would you say this song is about, Claude? Oh, Annette. Sweet Annette. This time it's your turn to decipher its meaning. Let me know when you've figured it out. Listen, I only came to hear you play. That's it. Promise. 
I'm not gonna make you perform in front of everyone else. I just wanted to hear you myself. J just you? Nobody else? Really? Really? I kept trying to ask, but you always ran away. That doesn't mean you can just watch me creepily from the shadows, you know. That would scare anyone. You're right, I'm sorry. I just didn't know how else to get your attention. You get so scared. But it looks like I ended up scaring you anyway. I'll leave you alone, Bernadetta. I really just wish I could have heard you play. Raphael? Ignatz, I am having a request. Huh? For me? Yes. Only you can be helping me. Something only I can do? That's a lot of pressure. What's it about? I want to borrow your lens. Your glasses. I have curiosity. Oh, you want to try my glasses? All right. I have so much gratitude. I will be trying them now. So, Petra, what do you think? The world appears... Blurred. Oh, my head feels dizzy. The danger for being sick is now very high. What? Petra, take them off. If you lean on me that hard, I'm going to. Ah! How are you feeling? I am feeling much better now. You have my thanks. You're welcome. I guess you shouldn't wear glasses unless you need them. Yes. I do not have friendliness with glasses. Like heroes' relics, only certain people can be using them. <laughs> glasses are like heroes' relics. What a funny thing to say. It is not for a joke. I was saying the truth. Your glasses are only for you to use. But I give thanks for you showing them to me. Petra's always so serious. Relics, glasses. I never thought about it like that. Lysithia, do you have a moment? I do. What do you need to speak with me about? I was thinking about the time we talked about our crests bringing bad weather. Hmm. Yes. We never did get to test that theory, since I haven't found any sun-bringing folks. Joking aside, each crest is unique in how it impacts the bearer's life. I've seen more than my share of crest bearers, after all. Some of them bore crests of Karen like us. Some even bore crests of Gloucester. Certainly. But I don't see your point. I'm not a crest scholar. I don't know all the details. I have a knack for guessing a person's crest just by looking at them. Forgive me, but do you have two crests? Uh, um, well? You don't have to tell me. I mean, it shouldn't even be possible to bear two crests. So if you do have two, you must be sitting on some major secrets. It's nice to know that someone understands. Of course. Everyone has things they would rather not talk about. For all you know, Catherine's not my real name. Maybe I'm an outlaw on the run from my homeland. That can't be true, can it? Stop messing with me. <laughs> I was kidding. Though, who knows? Maybe there is some truth in it. My point is, no matter what secrets we're keeping, I'm still me, and you're still you. I do worry a little about you. You never seem to let your guard down around other people. That can't be easy. You know, it's important for you to relax once in a while. I don't even know the meaning of the word. That's easy. Just gab with your friends about something pointless, and the stress will fade away. I'm always happy to chat, if you're interested. Well, thank you. Why are you being so kind to me anyway? I just feel a certain kinship with you. We both have crests of Karen, and we both have secrets we can't share with anyone. I see. I will say I'm happy to have someone around who actually seems to understand me. 
Good. You can feel comfortable with me. Since we have the same crest, we're basically sisters. Aww. I... I really like that. Someone as wonderful as you is my big sister? Well, don't you just say the cutest things. That's my little sister for you. P Professor Henneman, you wanted to speak with me? Miss Marianne, hello. Uh, do pardon the mess. Uh, please have a seat. Of course. I have been puzzling over why your father would wish to conceal your crest. And I have arrived at a conclusion. Would you like to hear it? No, I... I would rather not. Ah, fair enough. Then I will keep it to myself. However, if my theory is correct, well, then it is only natural for you and your father to try keeping your crest a secret. That said, I feel I would be remiss if I didn't point out that I consider this decision a most grievous error. I'm not sure what you mean. Crests never manifest in someone unfit to bear them. Which means, Miss Marianne, you have the ability to make the most of your crest, because it is, by definition, your crest. I have no desire to make use of my crest. But it can be of service to you, and I would venture to suggest to the world at large. Ever since I was born, that crest has been nothing but a burden to me. My parents, too. Ah, that's right. I have heard that you were adopted. Did one of your birth parents also have that crest? Uh, yes, it was my father. Then that crest is evidence that you are your true father's daughter. Concealing it, hiding that truth from the world, is denying your true parentage, is it not? I don't... I'm not suggesting you flaunt your crest. That would be highly unnecessary, possibly even dangerous. I simply wish you to accept who you are. Accept it? Accept the crest and allow its power to come forward. Then it will open itself to you. Whatever the crest may be, whatever its origin or its nature, it can serve you. It is yours to command. However you wish. Mine? Nobody can decide how to use your crest, Miss Marianne. That choice is yours alone. I will... Um, I will think about that. <laughs>
steady now. Still alive. Shall we? Thank you. But it's you or me. Leave it to me. Can't afford to lose. At the ready. Guide me well. My orders? I'll do my best. this quick what's my strategy <laughs> no time to slow down to victory! Must lead them well. I'm getting the hang of this. I will not die yet.
I have mastered this ability. But it's you or me. There is still room for improvement. <laughs> Destiny unfurls. Time for mercy. I aspire to be my best. Need to pull my weight.
spoken word. My orders? Steady now. Thanks. Thank you. Let's go. Gotten stronger, haven't I? Shall we? Did the trick. Guide me well. Appreciate it. Difference? Amazing. What's my strategy? Feel it in my bones.
I wasn't about to let you go. Good form. You shall not survive! Oh, shit! Lament your weakness. Wanna die here? My orders? Shall we? Make a difference? Pull my weight. I don't want to die here. So much. Leave it to me. Oh, lovely. What's my strategy? <laughs> Another victory.
Guide me well. Shall we? Apologies. Oh. I'm continuing to improve. Steady now. But it's you or me. Guess I've got that down. Obvious. This is for the best, right? Gaining confidence. Future of Fogler. I believe I can do more. I'm impressed. I'm sorry. Thanks so much. I got cocky. Why, thank you. Thank you. 
getting the hang of it. Thank you. Not enough. Why, thank you. Oh, lovely. Enemies are my enemies. Professor, Mercedes, what are you two doing here? Um, we were just talking. Why do you look so flustered? Haven't you heard? An Imperial army was spotted near Garrick Mach. Oh, do you think they came to scout? Maybe. We could probably take care of them if that's the case. But I heard the Death Knight is out there. The Death Knight? Nothing, really. Now's probably not the time, but I was just thinking of my brother. You have a brother? Yes, but we have different fathers. He was a year younger than me. Why do you suddenly come to mind? You see... Quickly, you must prepare for battle. The Death Knight has been spotted in the sealed forest. He only has a few troops with him, so we planned on taking him out with just the knights, but we can't guarantee that reinforcements won't arrive. We would appreciate your backup, just in case. The Death Knight. I have to go. Mercedes, wait! I don't know what's going on with you, but... No, I have to go see him. Yeah, we can't let him get away. I'll help Mercedes find the Death Knight. You go gather the others and meet up with us, Professor.
that cute in the right light. I'll give it a try. My interest is peaked. Searching for so long. I finally caught up with you, Mercedes. You're faster than you look. But I'm here now, so you can give up, Death Knight. What's my strategy? My orders? Let's go. good about this. Shall we? Thank you. Seems I've improved again. Fun to watch. to me. Onward. Guide me well.
steady now. Appreciate that. Put me in. At your service. Flee, and I will not chase you. Challenge me, and I will have no choice but to fight. I'm all right. Disappointing.
Strength building. Steady now. Thanks so much. Still alive. Whoa. For the future of Fodland. It won't be in vain. This could turn the tides. Thank you. 
goods. Thank you. A difference. There is still room for improvement. Feel it in my bones. Lovely. 
Another victory. I must lead them well. Why, thank you. You're too kind. Something special. I fight for Lady Rhea. I'll help too. Let's get moving. working out. are approaching what should we do let's take them out reinforcements just means we get to fight even more
getting stronger. That is all. That was fun to watch. Put it 
to the test. No mercy. I believe I can do more. Thank you. Make a difference. More effective. Looking good. No way I can lose here.
experience feeds growth. There's no turning back now. My orders? I don't want to die here. I can help. We've got to try. Seems I've improved again. That's it? Thank you.
I took care of it. Appreciate that. yourself with that mask and helmet but i know who you really are i have nothing to say to you we've got your back i have an idea The infamous Death Knight, champion of the Empire. Taking you down is gonna be satisfying. <laughs> Simpleton. Way that easy. How about a 
without a curtsy. Have faith. Guide me well. my strategy.
Be smart or I'm finished. There is still room for improvement. Exemplary. <sighs> we did it. Are you all right, Mercedes? I am, thanks to you. But still... There's something you wanted to ask him, right? Come on, he ran off into the forest. Thank you, Kaspar. You came. How many years has it been since we last spoke? I'm so sorry. I should have come for you sooner. I'm sure it wasn't pleasant living in House Bartels. I'm not sure I follow. Do you know this guy, Mercedes? My younger brother, Emil. Is it really you? I'm sorry, what? Your brother is the Death Knight? But you two look nothing alike! Mercedes, leave the monastery. Hold on just a minute. Is that all you've got to say for yourself? This doesn't concern you. That's not true. You're her brother, right? But you've got nothing nice to say to her after all this time? You will die. Even if I die, I've made my choice. Please, Emil, fight on our side instead. I cannot. My soul has long departed. And yet... Here. Take this and go. Is this... a hero's relic? You and I must share the same crest. When next we meet, I will kill you without hesitation. You won't kill me. I have this now. <sighs> what is it? You got a problem with me? <sighs> Take this. This is... I will kill her. Until then, she must live. Emil! I can't believe he's gone again. I can't tell whether or not he actually cares that you're his sister. Hmm. 
somewhere, hiding underneath that helmet, there's a very sweet boy. Is that a joke? Would a sweet boy threaten to kill someone? I don't get you, Mercedes. Living at House Bartels changed him. But that's beside the point. Thank you, Kaspar. I couldn't have confronted him without you. Don't worry about it. I may not understand you half the time, but we're still pals. Come on, then, pal. Let's get back to everyone else. This was partly a challenge for me. I am getting to the heart of it. <laughs> it was all... about. I got it? Aw, oh, thanks, Professor. That's really nice of you to say. I...
Professor? May I discuss something with you? I promised to help you find the truth of who you are, but I'm afraid it's not that simple. There are some details I have kept concealed. Five years ago, before she vanished, I asked Rhea some pointed questions. I learned that she knows everything about you. No, that is understating it. Rhea is responsible for your existence. I could explain to you here and now what fragments of knowledge I was able to pry from Rhea. I fear, however, that a partial understanding might do you more harm than good. Once we save Rhea, you will know the whole of it. For now, that is all I can tell you. If you are still uncertain about your feelings, then permit me to add one more thing. You, Rhea, and I, we are like family. Because of those deep ties, you can be certain that I will never abandon or betray you. On the contrary, I greatly wish to see what your future holds. I am, and will always be, your ally. You are not wrong. History is full of examples. I don't believe that will be the case here, but I suppose all I can do is ask for your trust. The truth is, you have become indispensable to me. And that is true quite independently of whether I see eye to eye with Rhea, or even whether we are friends. After this war is over, where I go and what I do will depend wholly on you. I am still trying to figure that out myself. Perhaps it is just that I find you so fascinating that I cannot bring myself to leave your side. I dislike a one-sided conversation, but in this case I am afraid I had no choice. Our future is yours to determine. Why am I here? Oh, that aroma. My favorite tea. I thank you. Not bad. Yes. Impressive. What? Impressive. What? I see. I know it's important to take a break, but if you rest too long, your muscles wither. I see. <laughs> You're staring at me.
Not bad. Impressive. What? <sighs> I dislike making eye contact when I'm talking. Even when I'm talking to you. Thanks for your hospitality. I hope you'll invite me again sometime. You know, Hilda, one day I'd love to see you at your full strength. What are you talking about? I always give it my all. You're the one who's constantly goofing around. Well, if you think that's what passes for full strength... Anyway, let's get started. We pushed ourselves and still ended up with this mess. Well, at least it's over. That could have gone better. Maybe next time I'll put in a little more effort. Some things you can't learn in a book. Good fuel for a scheme. I'll try to put this to use. There must be more to this. It's starting to feel like a part of me. I understand more every day. Looks like I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Thank you so much. Thanks. I'm glad I asked you.
last, as expected. I feel like I'm drowning in responsibilities. Claude, take my mind off it all. Regale me with another of your weird childhood stories. Okay, then. How about an old story from a foreign land that my dad told me when I was a kid? Once upon a time, there was a white camel that got separated from his herd. <laughs> I'm so happy for that white camel. I really thought he was going to die. Was that story really worth bawling your eyes out over? <laughs> it was wonderful. Don't you know how moving that story is? You know, I never thought much of it until today. But seeing you bawling like that, I do appreciate it a little more now. <laughs> What's that mean? Well, you're always fake crying, aren't you? Getting all misty-eyed to make people think you're a delicate flower? What? You're awful. I only cry when I'm sad. Claim what you like, but I can spot real tears from fake tears any day of the week. Fess up. <laughs> if you understand me so well, maybe it's because you're no different. How's that? When you smile or laugh, it's not sincere. I can tell. I've only seen you genuinely smile a handful of times. Like when you're talking to the professor. Wow, good one, Hilda. You hit me right in the gut. I guess you're right. I'm not so different from you in that way. But how did you come to realize that? Have you been watching me that closely? I'm afraid so. My eyes seem to wander toward you of their own accord. What? <laughs> Hold on. Forget I said that. I didn't say that. Nope, no can do. Forgetting isn't something this crafty brain of mine is capable of. Besides, my eyes have a tendency to wander in your direction, too. How else do you think I found out about your fake crying? Huh? What are you getting at? Say, Hilda, once everything settled down, do you want to come meet my parents? I mean, don't get the wrong idea, you just seem interested in my family. Besides, you've opened up to me quite a bit, but I still haven't let you in on my own secrets. If you meet my parents, I think you'll understand, though it might come as a bit of a surprise. Your family? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious. Well then, if neither of us changes our minds before the opportunity presents itself, let's agree to go visit my home together. Although, if it's a long journey, my brother might not be too happy. True, that might be a tough nut to crack. As tough as Fodlan's locket. <laughs> That reminds me, Ferdinand. I wonder if a certain rumor has already reached your ears. I suspect I know what you are referring to. A certain noble who caused a stir at one of the local taverns, correct? For someone of status to make such a scene. What a disgrace. I thought just the same. A noble ought to hold himself to a higher standard. It is hardly appropriate to drink and mingle with a tavern full of commoners. Oh, uh, that is not quite what I meant. I do not object to a noble patronizing their local establishments. In fact, I would say such excursions have value. Is that so? I would be very curious to hear what value you mean exactly. But allow me first to venture a guess. Is it that you suppose it is proper for a noble to bolster a town's wealth with his patronage? If that is your thinking, then I would counter that whatever one adds to a merchant's coffers seldom makes it to the pockets of the townsfolk. I think that if a noble wishes to use his resources to ease the burdens of the commoners, he ought to go about town and spend it more directly. That is wonderfully insightful, Lawrence. Albeit, not what I had in mind. What I meant was this. We can benefit from crossing the threshold and learning more about regular folk. We scarcely understand the reality of their lives. In turn, they do not know about us. I have heard that some believe we have horns growing from our heads. It is an embarrassing and potentially perilous state of affairs. You are quite right. In fact, that reminds me of something a boy once said to me when I visited a village on my family's territory. 
He actually asked me if I had a tail. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> we all need a laugh now and then. As a man of status, I feel it is my calling to right the world's wrongs. But there is only so much I can do alone. Working in tandem, though, you and I could make tremendous accomplishments. My sentiments exactly. Together we could achieve a great deal. Though the circumstances of birth may have placed one of us in the Empire and the other in the Alliance, we can still aim for a brighter future together. Yes, precisely. Together, there is nothing that we cannot accomplish. By the way, Lawrence, do you have a tale? <laughs> I just wanted to say that I've been watching and I'm really impressed by how hard you work. Very dedicated for someone so young. Oh, um, thank you. I really admire your everything. But you know, everybody needs to relax now and then. I was wondering if maybe you and me could... Uh, I'm quite busy. I should get going. Bye. That was difficult to watch. Lawrence, ever since you started hanging around, I've had no luck. Usually, if I show a girl I'm mature, noble, and interested, she's an easy catch. Your logic is sound, I will admit. But your results are less than entirely convincing. Honestly, all this talk of maturity and experience from a shallow person like you is rather laughable. Shallow? What? Like your nobleness is some properly cultured man of the world? Naturally, my bearing is as elegant and refined as silk. Observe. You seem to be deep in thought. Is there something on your mind? Please, allow me to lend you my ear. I will gladly shoulder any of your burdens. Oh, thank you. But it's not something I really want to talk about. So harsh. Even the slightest worry, I would have been happy to listen. <laughs> Why, yes, your silky bearing was quite impressive. You're always going on about nobility, but that's no way to win a woman. Your problem, and I may have told you this before, at least twice, your problem is you're pretentious. <laughs> that's rich coming from you. Your bearing is so flippant that you utterly fail to gain a lady's trust. How can you not see that? All I'm failing to see is you getting a girl's attention. How dare you? Ah, uh, listen. I'm sorry. That was mean. And you're probably right about me not being serious enough. <sighs> I will concede. I feel the same. Enough at least to keep your advice at the back of my mind. I was a touch too stubborn. It's the same in battle, isn't it? If you don't bend a little, you fail. Even so? Yeah, with that being said... I will outclass you, Sylvain. Bring it on, Lawrence. Mariette! Come here, quick! Oh, wh what's wrong, Raphael? It's that bird you were talking to! I just found him! See? Right there on the lower branch. That's gotta be him! But he looks a little sad for some reason. You're right. Um, do you mind if I handle this? Hello there, Mr. Bird. How do you do? Hmm. Yes, I see. I see. So your food supply is... Food? I got it! I completely understand. I have seen more people and birds foraging for berries lately. It would be ideal if those berries were growing in another forest nearby. Then you wouldn't have to. Are you hungry, Mr. Bird? I got just what you need. Are those bugs? Yuck. Look at him go. He's loving it. He's gonna get so big and strong after this. That was... Disgusting. But how did you know he was hungry? I could tell by looking at him. He looked hungry and weak. More importantly, 
I saw what you did. That bird wasn't speaking human, so you gotta understand birdies. I knew it! Oh, about that. I'm sorry, Raphael, but I need to tell you the truth. I can sort of understand what animals are thinking when I look at them, but I can't speak to them. I'm sorry for leading you on. Oh, I see. What about me, then? Can you tell what I'm thinking when you look at me? I, um... Uh, no, Raphael. I can't. Well, of course not. You're not even looking at me. You gotta look at my eyes. Uh, nope, still can't do it. Uh, I guess I just gotta tell you. I'm thinking it would be nice if you talked to me the way you talk to animals. What do you mean? Whenever you talk to animals, you seem happy and friendly. I just wish you'd talk to me like that, too. I'm so sorry, Raphael. I didn't know. I... What if I tried this? Cheep, cheep, cheery, choo, choo, doo! What the... <laughs> Whoa! I've never heard you laugh before. I should have talked to you and Birdies sooner. Cheep, chira, cheep, li, woo, teedle, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't quite catch that one. I said you gotta eat bugs to grow big and strong, just like Mr. Bird. Ah, I think I'll have to pass. <laughs> Oof, capsized the teapot. Tea leaves on the carpet. This'll be fun to clean up. Hey, Hilda. Is something wrong? Ah, uh, Ignatz. I accidentally knocked over my teapot. I drunk all the tea already, thank the goddess, but the tea leaves went right into the carpet. Oh, that's a mess. Here, let me help. I can leave stains if you're not careful. But don't you have somewhere to be? Oh, no, don't worry. I'm on a break. What's that in your hands? Oh, painting supplies. You were gonna go do some painting, weren't you? Ah, yes. The weather's quite splendid, and I found a place where some gorgeous flowers are blooming. But the flowers aren't going anywhere this second. Let's clean this up. Okay. Thanks, Ignatz, and sorry to keep you away from your painting. That's okay. It didn't stain, at least. We picked all the leaves out of the carpet. Still going painting? Or is it too late in the day? No. I think time-wise it'll be fine. If you're not doing anything, Hilda, would you care to join me? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. Forget what I said. I'm, I'm sure you're busy anyway. You didn't let me say anything. Well, no, but... You didn't reply, so I thought you didn't want to. I never said I didn't want to. I was just surprised. I'd love to see those pretty flowers you mentioned. I'm glad you invited me. Oh, that's good. Wait, you're... you're glad? Of course I am. I like being invited to things, silly. Right, right, of course. It's affirming. Yeah, exactly. See? You get it. So there's no need to worry that an invitation is burdening someone. It feels good to be asked. Of course, of course. Well then, in addition to seeing the flowers with me, would you like to help with my painting? I wouldn't want to screw up your opus. I'm not much of a painter. No, I meant that I'd like to paint you. The flowers all around you. Oh, that's too much, isn't it? Forget I said anything. Silly, you didn't even let me answer. But you're right, I'm not up for that. I'm sorry, I... I'm not up for that, unless your painting of me will look really, really cute. Can you make that happen? Huh? Yes, of course. I'll paint you cute as a button. Good, shouldn't be too hard. I can feel a very cute smile coming on. <laughs> Huh. Oh, Ignatz, what are you sighing over? Sorry, 
I shouldn't sigh in such a holy place. There's nothing wrong with it. I sigh here all the time. The goddess receives all our prayers and our sighs. What's bothering you? I'd be happy to talk about it if you'd like. Oh, it's nothing. Not worth talking about. Is that so? Am I not worth talking to? That's not what I meant. <sighs> Sorry to offend you. I'll tell you about it. I'm just uncertain about my future. My father wants me to be a knight. I don't think I can handle it. Can you imagine a knight as pathetic as me? I don't find you pathetic at all. Is there something you would rather pursue? Well, I've always loved painting. You want to become an artist? How wonderful! What's your ambition? Me? I simply want to help people with their troubles. Those who can't help themselves. I've considered working for the church, but that's only a vague idea. Oh, I'm sorry. We were supposed to be discussing your troubles. Not at all. I'm actually feeling a little better. Knowing that you aren't sure about your future, I don't feel quite so... alone. Everyone in this world feels a little lost, you know? I really do believe that the life of an artist is a wonderful dream to pursue. There was a beautiful painting of the goddess in the church where I used to live. Whenever times were difficult, I would stare up at her and sigh. Thinking about that painting helps me even now. I've always wanted to paint the goddess. You should. I'm sure your painting will help someone else in their time of need. I can't paint anything powerful enough to do that. I wish I could. Maybe one day. I'll give that some thought. Thank you, Mercedes. <laughs> Um, excuse me, Shamir? What is it? Do you need something? Yes. I was curious about the world beyond Fodlan. Oh. You came from somewhere outside Fodlan, right? I'm curious about your homeland, what kind of place it was, and I thought you might... I will not. Sorry? There's no point in me telling you about it. I... uh... I, I see. All right, then. Wait. You misunderstand. Hearing me tell stories about the things I've seen? What good is that? That's just my experience. If you want to know about the world, you need to experience it for yourself. Is what I meant to say. Oh, that's what it was. That's... good. How so? I thought... maybe you didn't like me. Is that what you think? In your experience, do I seem to dislike you? If you can't determine something as simple as that, then you would gain nothing from the outside world. Oh, um... I don't actually know. I'm not very good at reading people, I guess. Ask me. I'm right here. I, I, I'm not that brave. I'm sorry, I'll leave you alone. I'll be going now. Not brave enough to ask a simple question. Or does he just not care? Hello, Marianne. Won't you at least tell me why you're avoiding me? It hurts. It really does. I'm not avoiding you. I'm just not very good at talking to people in general. I told you I'm on your side, and I meant it. I'm guessing you don't much like talking about crests. Call it a hunch. Well, um... I'm the same way, you know. The value of my life has always been dictated by the damn thing. It's not fair to have your worth determined by something you can't control. Growing up in House Gautier taught me that the hard way. What do you believe determines a person's value? I like to think it's a person's smile. Huh? Their smile? A smile. It tells you who someone is. Are they fake or sincere? 
It also makes you feel stronger when you smile. My smile helps me focus and set free all of that power I never asked for. Hmm, I wonder. Try it out, Marianne. Be strong-willed and put everything you've got into your smile. Smile, be strong-willed. How's this? Yeesh, that's a terrific first try. If a bit stiff, lift the corners of your lips just a bit. Oh, I know. Try saying cheese. Cheese? Hey, that was good. It might feel a bit unnatural, but you'll get used to it soon enough. Cheese. Are you sure this will make me stronger? Guaranteed. It's a great smile, you know? Let's go to town and show it off. If you lift your eyes from the ground, you'll see that the world has all sorts of amazing things to offer. The more you realize that, the more you'll smile. I'll think about it. Please, don't let me pressure you. If you don't want to go, I understand. It's not that I don't like going into town. I'm just eager to get back to my room. I want to go practice my smile. If I keep practicing, maybe someday I'll be ready to go into town with you. Oh yeah? That sounds great. I can't wait to see your best smile. Ferdinand, there you are. Stay back, Hilda. I will no longer entertain your clever little requests. Your wiles will not work this time. You shouldn't yell at a noble maiden. It's a no-no, etiquette-wise. By way of an apology, you may brew me some tea. I am sorry to have offended you, but delightful as it sounds, I will not be brewing any tea at present. Besides, I taught you how to do it before. You should be able to do it on your own, so why don't you? You did show me how to do it, but I can't do it as well as you. And why not? You selected just the right leaves, and you boiled them just right. You even considered the room temperature and humidity. Then, you set out just the right pot, along with just the right cups. You immediately picked out a design that you knew I would like. When you poured, the temperature, the timing, and the technique were all impeccable. Hmm. You seem to know an awful lot about tea for someone who cannot even pour it. Oh, uh, uh no, not really. Maybe I picked up a couple things from watching you. Even the sound of the liquid pouring into the cups was like music. Taken as a whole, it was an almost spiritual experience. A symphony for the senses. I was just making tea in the traditional fashion. Oh, I'm so flustered I'm not getting my point across. I'm trying to say that your tea is like love. You're devoted to bringing happiness to those who drink it. I could taste that from the first drop. Well, when serving another, one must put in a little bit of love. But I must say, you surprise me. Not many are so attentive to the finer points of tea. I made quite the impression on you. Perhaps I ought to pour you another cup. Really? Oh, thank you, Ferdinand. I shall find us a suitable brew. Wait here a moment. <laughs> oh, Ferdinand. So simple, and yet, so kind. Oh, it's Sedith. I'd better slip away before he... Ah, I see you are indulging in a bit of reading. You are fond of books, I take it? Yes, reading's one of my favorite pastimes. I was just finishing up, actually, so I think I'll... That is most fortuitous. Um, fortuitous? How do you figure? Come with me. I have a story to share with you. Once upon a time, deep in the cold mountains, there lived a lazy fox and an industrious squirrel. The squirrel worked tirelessly all day long, while the fox did nothing but lounge around and play. When autumn came, the squirrel hurriedly gathered up acorns for the winter, 
But the fox continued to play without a care. A biting winter fell upon the land. The mountains, caked in snow, concealed all nourishment from sight. The hungry fox went to the squirrel's dwelling, but the squirrel had locked up tight and gone to sleep. Every so often, the squirrel would wake, enjoy a nibble of an acorn, and then return to an easy slumber. The fox, on the other hand, with nowhere else to turn, was forced to scrounge for food in the bitter cold of the forest. Forlorn and hungry, he wandered in solitude all through the winter, until spring came once more. And so it is to this very day that foxes are denied the comforts of hibernation. Ah, I really learned something about foxes. <laughs> I read lots of fairy tales like that when I was little. But the lazy fox and the industrious squirrel, huh? That one I don't think I've heard before. That is not surprising, considering I wrote it. Oh, you wrote it? I did. When Flane was young, she loved fairy tales more than anything. I would read them to her often. This one, however, is a more recent creation. I wrote it for the benefit of the children in the monastery. So, what do you think? I'm curious to hear what sort of impression it made on you. It's so cute! You, you found it to be cute? I can just see it now. You writing fairy tales for your little sister. That's just the cutest thing. Honestly, to me, you usually come across as stern and overly perceptive. But now I know you have a sweet side, too. I feel like I'm seeing you in a whole new light. That is not what I was hoping to hear. Cleaning again, I see. Hilda, you're in the way. Move it. I'm supposed to refill the horse's water troughs, but I can't find the buckets. I was told that they'd be in the usual place. What's the usual place? Maybe you'd know where that is if you did your job sometime. You know, Cyril, I don't want to interrupt you while you're cleaning, but... Come on, the buckets are over near the wall, where they always are because I put them there. Okay. Thanks for your help. You're pretty strong. I bet you're tired though. Come on, let's rest a bit. Okay, just for a minute though. I got more work to do. I'm not a fan of awkward silences. <laughs> Anything interesting happen lately? Figured you were the one with something to say. Quiet, don't bother me. I need an interesting topic for this letter I'm writing to my brother. I'm stumped. Your brother write to you a lot? Constantly, yeah. He must be bored. He's always going on about how worried he is for me. What's worse, if I take too long to reply, he gets more worried and writes more about it. Write about your life, maybe. You know, stuff like, I got real lazy again today. Or maybe, can you believe I still don't know where they put the water buckets? You're mean. Do you really think that little of me? You're a lazy gal who gets people to do her work for her. I never knew anybody like that in Almira. Oh, really? So, Lady Rhea isn't the only difference between Fodlin and Almira, after all? I don't like comparing Lady Rhea with you, but I figure you're right. But you know what's real weird? Nobody seems to mind picking up your slack. Even me. Sorry, what was that? Uh, nothing worth repeating. Anyway, I gotta get back to work. He's such a diligent boy. I don't think I've ever seen someone from Fodlin work that hard. Oh, hang on. I never got an idea from him about what to write in my letter. Ugh. I guess there's nothing for it. Maybe I can just write about Cyril. <laughs> Thank you. 
I heard what you did. I'm disappointed, Leonie. Um, hi, Shamir. What have you heard exactly? You aimed your bow at a group of students passing through the monastery. Was this your idiotic idea of training? I told you to be cautious. I'm sorry. Idiotic's a bit harsh, though, isn't it? What were you planning on doing after you took aim? Shooting passersby? <sighs> of course not. If you want to train, choose a target you can actually shoot. I know. Everyone was pretty mad. I really am sorry. Nobody's happy to have a bow pointed at them. My mentor used to do that kind of thing a lot. Mentor? Was that Gerald? I don't know much about him. Would he really do that? Would and did. Mostly when he was drunk, though. Not a good habit to emulate. From now on, only aim at bugs, like I showed you. But, um, I don't really like bugs. You don't like bugs? That should make you want to aim at them even more. I just can't look at them. Seeing all the extra legs and things, ugh, makes my skin crawl. Then just draw some spiders and hang them on the walls. Aim at the drawings whenever you pass one. Overcome your fear of bugs while you train. You want me to draw spiders? Ew, no! Would that even help? Yes, I should know. Huh? You were scared of them too? I was, but they don't bother me anymore. Okay, you've talked me into it. I'll give it a try. And don't hang them where other people might pass. <laughs> got it, got it. Learn my lesson. Promise. I'm choosing to believe that. <laughs> oh, what is that lovely smell? It seems to be coming from the training area. Oh, what could it be? You have met your match, Rust. Ah, so stubborn. Good day to you, Ferdinand. You smell amazing. That is you I am smelling, is it not? Ah, Flane, hello. Are you referring to the smell of this oil? Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, that is the smell, all right. I am simply doing some armor maintenance. A little oil keeps the rust at bay, ensuring that the armor moves smoothly, without any hitches. I see. I thought maybe you were doing some cooking. You smell a bit like food, but I suppose that is the oil tricking my nose. <laughs> I would not cook in the training area. Are you hungry by chance? Not really, no. But is that oil not also used for cooking? For things like frying meat or drizzling over a nice crisp salad, things of that nature? Were I to coat my armor in oil that smells of food, I would be distracted by hunger at all times. I doubt that amidst actual fighting, the smell would still make you hungry. We are always dancing with death on the battlefield. When your focus wavers, your life is forfeit. I suppose you're right. And actually, all of this talk of delicious oil has made me hungry. <laughs> in that case, I will accompany you to the dining hall. I will be finished in a couple of minutes. I must apologize, Ferdinand, but I cannot wait even a moment for you. I am famished! I shall be in the dining hall, getting my fill of fried goodies. Well, that was quick. Hmm. I will admit, now that she has mentioned it, it is a rather appetizing smell. shopping trip took longer than expected, didn't it, Mercy? It truly did. You bought just about everything in the place. <laughs> You're so good at deciding the best thing to buy. I sort of wanted it all. I mean, not that I was excessive. I think you bought just about as much as I did. Oh, really? The number of bags you're carrying says otherwise. What? That's... Oh, fine. You got me. I was just having too much fun. I love shopping with you, Mercy. It was fun. It's nice going into town without having to run errands for once. Isn't it? 
And I'm pretty confident the professor will forgive our little detour. <laughs> this actually reminds me of going to school in Ferdiad. Me too. It almost feels like that time in our lives was a story from long ago. So much has changed since then. Oh, but there's at least one thing that hasn't changed. Me and you, right? We're the same old friends we always were. That's just what I was about to say. I've known you so long I can always guess. Mercy, we'll stay friends like this forever, won't we? Is something wrong? You sound worried. Since our time in the capital, so much has happened. We've had to make new lives for ourselves, and we've seen at least as many hard times as good. If things keep changing like this, I wonder if we'll be able to stay the same people we are now. I wonder that too. I don't think everything in the future will be perfect, but it's us. So I'm sure we'll figure it out together, right? How did you know what I was going to say? <laughs> oh, Mercy, I can always guess what you're gonna say. Oh, it's getting late. We better hurry back before the professor gets angry. You're right. Run, Mercy! What? Wait for me, Annie. You know I'm not as fast as you. Run! <laughs> Hey, Sedith. I got a delivery for you. Thank you, Cyril. Would you mind waiting just a moment for me to confirm the contents? Sure thing. All seems to be accounted for. I lack the time to handle tasks of this kind myself. I appreciate you making the effort. Is there anything I can assist you with? Do you have any concerns? Concerns? Nah. I'm happy just working for Lady Rhea. I got a way better life now than I ever did before. If your better life is this frugal, I have to wonder what your previous experience was like. It must not have been easy before you came to us. But you should know that is in the past now. You are young. You should be enjoying life. Do not allow your past to overshadow that. Is there nothing you desire? We will support you in any way we can. Really, there's nothing. Except... Nah, it's okay. Except? I don't got anywhere else to go, and I just want to be able to stay here forever. This place Lady Rhea gave me, it's the only place I know to call home. I will keep that in mind. Well, I got work to do. Excuse me. Of course. I apologize for delaying you. <laughs> smell mm, it's amazing my fave in fact do you like it too Ooh, <laughs> I love this stuff did you know that
This is delicious! My absolute favorite! I appreciate any good meal, but nothing beats enjoying my favorite food. That looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. Eating food always fires me up. Hoorah! Let's go fight somebody! This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. This is nearly as delicious as Mother's cooking. I would happily eat this every day. this dish it was my father's favorite delicious after a scrumptious meal like that I feel that I can really seize the day I did not expect much from the dining hall, but this does not disappoint. This is my absolute favorite! How did you know, Professor? Eating delicious food really takes my worries away. Yeah, you just get it, Professor. This is my favorite. Yummy! Who made this? I'll have to give my compliments to the chef. This is so good. Can I have seconds? What's the point of singing practice? It's not going to make me stronger. You look like a cat that's been sprayed with water. What? You don't think I should sing the high notes? Me! 
need something. This one? You're all set. See you again soon. You can't be serious. I see some potential here.
this one, yes? I 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 thank you. This one, yes? I this one, yes? I this one, yes? I this one, yes? I thank you. Return soon, please. Hey, welcome. You have a good eye. You have a good eye. A pleasure doing business with you. You have a good eye. A you have a good eye. A pleasure doing business with you. Come again. Did you call me? I am grateful. Some sweets. Anything is fine. Uh -huh. I see. It's not in me to put energy into things that won't yield results. I just don't see the point. Color is pretty unique, huh? Tea is nice and all, but it's not much good when you don't have sweets to go with it. This is delicious. Ah, that tea was delicious. Invite me again sometime. See ya! for you. Do you have a moment? Hey, Lysithia. I was about to grab some food. Would you like to come along? Actually, yes. That sounds fine. Great. Let's go. Hmm. The dining hall isn't exactly relaxing, is it? If there's a next time, I'll take you somewhere with a much better atmosphere. I don't really care about the atmosphere. I just wanted to apologize. Nah. I get why you told me off. There's nothing you need to apologize for. Can you just shut your mouth and listen for once? Here's something you may have already picked up on. I very much dislike being treated like a child. I've worked very hard to be where I am now, and such treatment makes it feel like all of that work is being ignored. But I think you're a genius, and you work harder than I ever did. When I was your age... Yes, you already told me all of this. Back then, you were just as devoted to goofing off as you are now. Ah, so I already told you that. What a perfect memory you have. And there it is. You're always so quick to flatter every woman you come across. I knew that, and yet I never thought you would direct your antics at me. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, okay? I know how hard you work, and I really wasn't trying to upset you. I just wanted to chat. I do not mind that you wished to chat with me. In fact, you might even say I was happy about it. Just a bit. Seriously? It sure didn't seem that way. Well, it's true. Your behavior is maddening. But in retrospect, I realize that was you treating me as you do all women, rather than like a child. I wasn't thinking about it like that at the time, and so I snapped at you. I could have perhaps approached the matter with a tad more maturity. Therefore, I would like to apologize. An apology? That is not how these conversations usually turn out. 
There's no need for that, though. Really, you'll make me blush if you keep this up. Listen, Lysithia, I want you to know that I meant every word, even if sincerity is difficult for me. You're as lovely as you are clever, and you have this strange charm about you. That's what I really honestly think. There you go again with your false flattery. I swear to you, it isn't false at all. And it's not flattery if it's the truth. Say what you will, you're still gonna have to earn my trust. Just this once, I'll cut you some slack. Don't get used to it. It's not like I can change who you are as a person. Sweet and tolerant, you never cease to amaze. I'll leave you with this. Don't say things you don't mean. It makes it impossible to tell the lies from the truth. Don't come crying to me if you carry on as you have and end up with no friends. <laughs> I have to say, Lysithia, your harshness is one of those things I find so charming about you. Ah, <sighs> you are exhausting. I guess the positivity is okay, though. <laughs> Delicious. Marianne, may I join you? Yes, Ferdinand, of course. Hmm. Um, is something wrong? I am sorry, but, uh, you seem very different compared to how you were before. <laughs> That may be true. Right there. You are smiling. I do not think I have ever seen you smile. Please, you're making me blush. I do not mean to embarrass you. I am just saying you seem to have truly changed. Well, I have you to thank for that. In truth, I spent a lot of time thinking about what you said. It meant so much when you told me that everyone has a purpose to fulfill. Even me. I am so glad to hear you say that, Marianne. I wonder, did you find a purpose for yourself? No, not yet. But I've been much happier since I started thinking about it more. I remembered a time back when I was working at the animal clinic. The rest of the staff was so thankful for the work I had done. Even in something as simple as looking after animals, I was able to make myself useful to others. Thinking about it made me realize that anyone can make other people happy, even someone like me. It sounds to me like you have already found your answer. What do you mean? Making people happy. If you ask me, that is a truly worthwhile purpose. You may be right. Ah, uh, I just remembered. I wanted to ask about your food. Yes, what about it? Today was my turn to prepare the meal. How is it? Oh, it is delicious. The flavor and the texture are superb, so you are certainly making me happy. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. I hope you will learn to like yourself. For what it is worth, I like you. Oh? Maybe, if you have the time. You can cook something for me again? For me alone, I mean. Of course. It would be my pleasure. <laughs> In response to the Alliance Army's plea, Judith has agreed to provide soldiers. To meet up with reinforcements, the Alliance Army sets out for Alel, the Valley of Torment. Unbeknownst to Claude, something else awaits them there. Uh, 
Why is it so hot? I'm getting all sweaty. Don't be a wimp. Anything's worth it for more food supplies. Move over, Raphael. Somehow you make the heat even worse. Let's stay calm, everyone. Once we meet up with Judith's soldiers, we can go right back home. Oh, I finally remembered. The legend goes that this valley was born from the wrath of the goddess. They say a pillar of light poured from the heavens and completely burned away the forest that used to be here. So you're telling me the goddess, who is supposed to be benevolent, burned a forest to a crisp? Typical. That's what the legend would have us believe, but it's not recorded in any of the scriptures. Either it's completely made up, or the goddess is some kind of monster. Huh? Is that... The time for idle chatter is over, Claude. Look over there. Ah, has someone come to greet us? That banner does not bear the Daphnal crest. If memory serves, that's the crest of House Roe, formerly Lords of the Kingdom. They joined the Empire side without hesitation during the coup. And now here they are, lying in wait for us. Damn. I thought we had disposed of all the spies. House Row is mediocre and vulgar, but I hear their knights are powerful. What about the Daphnal soldiers? You don't think... We've already been spotted, so there's no time to come up with a brilliant plan. Everyone, prepare for battle. I leave the command in your capable hands, my friend. Thank you. 
it makes me stronger. Valley of Torment. Perhaps a good place to finish off my life as a knight. Only if that puny force of children is able to kill me, of course. So, their general must be that stubborn-looking old man. He looks like he wouldn't even forgive a sobbing child. It's good we came armed for the occasion. Care to find Judith? Flames are flaring everywhere and burning people where they stand. LL's a terrible place. Everyone, if you don't want to get burned to a crisp, watch your step. Leave it to me. Steady now. Thanks. Guide me well. Sorry.
Let's make this quick. What's my strategy? Shall we? My orders? They're ready. Got yourself kept. The weak fall, the strong live. The crest of flames! <laughs> Quite full of themselves, aren't they? Just as I thought, the Professor's army. But it's too late to back out now. In Lenato's place, I have to do my duty. I don't want to fight you, Professor. But this is how it has to be. There's no turning back. You... You want to spare me? Why? I'll... I'll do it. I'll join your side. Let me fight for you. another one. Gotta get stronger. I 
will not die yet. I won't allow it. Had I room to grow? Appreciate that. Thank you. Make a difference. to be done.
fighting wears me out. There's more to be done. Best me. Here we go. Attack them from both sides. Thank you. Curtsy. 
Our quarrel wasn't personal. Fought and won. I am only just beginning. It won't be in vain. Oh, old Gwendol is here. And he doesn't look to be an ally. Oh, the hero of Daphnil is here. I'll expect more from her than the young ones. Continue my training.
Thanks so much. to lose. Let's leave the pleasantries for later. First, I want you to take this. It's nothing important, but it may prove useful. So, you're finally here, Supreme Leader. And something extra has tagged along. Sorry, Judith. That rat got away. Hey, don't worry. And here. You should have this. Perhaps it will come in handy. chance. Thank you. 
on. I aspire to be my best. Good form. Sorry, but I must. Sorry, it's got to be like this. Am I getting closer? Thank you. You're too kind. Lament your weakness. Time to slow down. Fun to watch. I'm hurt, but I'm with you. 
Sorry, but I must. <laughs> Does a whelp like you really expect to kill me? I am Gwendol, the Grey Lion, a knight by the hand of Count Roe. Do your worst. Now's our chance. I can exceed this. <laughs> so I have found a place to die. Young ones, I thank you. that much closer to my goal. I am only just beginning. That old man must have been struggling with the position he found himself in. It's time to gather ourselves and pull back our troops. To think we'd get into a scrap here, of all places. We're lucky we all made it out alive. Hey, Professor. Are you still watching this boy's back? Can you quit calling me a boy in front of everyone? I'm the leader of the Alliance now. It's not proper. Not proper, is it? Says the leader who has neglected Alliance territory for years. If you're really the master tactician, you should go back to working quietly at whatever little desk you do your planning on. Yeah, don't call me that either. Who even came up with that nickname? <laughs> it's a perfect title for a boy who loves crafty schemes as much as you do. You should be grateful to the professor. On your own, you'd look like a scoundrel of a leader. <laughs> Claude's usually so flippant, but even he gets overwhelmed when Judith is around. As expected from the leader of the prestigious House Daphne, her dignity is beyond compare, even if she is no longer one of the five great lords. The five most influential lords of the Leicester Alliance, they hold the voting rights at the roundtable conferences. House Daphne used to be included among their ranks, but division from within has hastened their decline. Their vote has since been passed to the emerging Margrave Edmund, Thanks for the exposition, Gloucester boy. Boy? I will not... Now to business. There were some unexpected interruptions, but I've brought soldiers and supplies, as promised. Thanks, Judith. I'll gladly take them off your hands. Hold your horses, boy. You're misunderstanding. These soldiers are precious to me. I made them what they are. I'm not about to loan them out to someone. No? Then why did you come here? What I'm saying is that I'll be joining your army. You're going to fight the Empire with the Knights of Seros, right? Fight for Lady Rhea? Not without me. That's admirable and all, but we still don't know for sure if Rhea is in the... Oh, she's there. A witness saw Lady Rhea being dragged off by the Imperial Army after the battle five years ago. Are you sure your source is reliable? One of my own saw it happen. I'm certain. It seems we chose wisely when we decided to fight against the Empire. But you're the leader of House Daphne. Is it okay for you to leave your territory unattended? And what about you? Is it okay for you to leave the Regan territory unattended? That's... I... 
I've left it in the hands of a reliable retainer and... And I've asked that retainer to watch over Daphne territory as well. Wait, wait, wait. You just up and decided to get my retainer to do that without even asking me? <sighs> no respect, this one. Oh, you haven't met him yet, Professor? His name is Nardell. He strikes me as a really special individual. And he's quite handsome, too. So that's your definition of handsome? No objections, then. Good. That settles it. House Daphnil is now yours to command. I'm sure you'd come along even if I refused. So be it. We'll be counting on you, Judith. With Judith joining our forces, we've secured some more troops and supplies. Albeit not many. Hmm. I'm sorry it couldn't be more. No, it's enough for the time being. We'll use them to secure even more troops and supplies. The key to my plan is Count Gloucester, the leader of the pro-Empire faction in the Alliance. You intend to sway my father to join the other side? If Count Gloucester were to switch to the other side, that would basically unify the Alliance. Then we could utilize our full military force in the fight against the Empire. You don't mean to ask me to persuade him, do you? That would be quite impossible. I don't plan on it. We'll just take his concerns out of the equation. The Aramid River flows along the border between Gloucester territory and the Empire, right? Of all the bridges that cross it, the Great Bridge of Murden is the only one near Gloucester territory large enough for an army. Currently, the Imperial Army occupies it. So, if we were to capture the bridge... Count Gloucester would be freed from the threat of the Empire, thanks to us. But we have to pass through Gloucester territory to reach the Great Bridge of Murden, do we not? Yes, and if we attempted it, naturally he would try to stop us. I am sorry, but I must ask. Surely you do not plan to engage in combat with my father? Don't worry. I want him as a future ally. What good would it do to waste both of our forces fighting? Who do you think you're talking to, Teach? Preparations are in the works even now. <laughs> so the Master Tactician is finally going to show us his true power. I'm looking forward to it. <sighs> I'll do my best to live up to that name by making my scheme as impressive as possible. <laughs> 